It wasn't that long ago that only eating egg whites was a popular dietary recommendation. After all, I can remember myself in college coming home from class and eating several egg whites and discarding the yolks. However, of recent, there seems to be have, seems to have been some transition. I've heard some influencers out there making recommendations to do the exact opposite, primarily focus on consuming the yolks and discard the egg whites. But which of those really is what we should be doing? Hey guys, I'm Dr. Arlen Hill out at Harvest Hills Ranch, and I thought what I would do today is take a deeper look at this idea of consuming egg whites versus egg yolks, and truly compare both of those to consuming whole eggs. And I wanna approach this from two perspectives. I wanna approach this from an observational common sense approach, and I also want to approach it from more of the science-based evidence. So let's start off with more of the common sense observational approach. And these are my observations just from being here at the ranch and, and seeing how things function in nature. And one thing that immediately comes to mind for me when looking at eggs is that, let me give you some examples. If we have, if we go to uh, take eggs out of our nest boxes for either the chicken, la chicken laying birds or for the duck layers, and let's say something, there's, maybe there's a crack in one of the eggs and we discard that egg. We'll just throw it back to the chickens or throw it back to the ducks and break it, let them have it. Those birds don't differentiate between the yolk and the white. They eat the whole egg. Uh, same thing if that egg makes it to the kitchen and we find a crack in it or potentially something wrong with it before we use it or maybe we're cleaning up eggs before delivery for our customers and we find an egg that we're not comfortable with selling and we discard that, we give those to the dog. And she doesn't differentiate. She eats the whole egg, doesn't think twice, doesn't sniff at the yolk or just sniff at the white, she eats the whole egg. And if you think about that, that makes a lot of sense just in general that nothing is wasted in nature. Nature finds a way to use all things and certainly these animals consuming these eggs that we've chosen not to consume are an indication of that. So just from a common sense viewpoint, that would seem to suggest that eating the whole egg makes far more sense. In addition to that, if you think about what an egg is, an egg is a single cell, but it's way more than that because literally there is everything that is in that egg that is necessary for the development of a chick or whatever, whatever other bird that is being supported by that egg, maybe a duckling as the case may be. Regardless, the point is that all of that nutrition is there to support that young bird in those early days of life. So literally, let's say that we get chicks in, and this is something we routinely do for meat birds, we get those chicks in. Those chicks can function for up to three days without any consumption of additional feed just based on what was available to them in that yolk. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it very quickly becomes evident that yeah, consuming the whole egg probably is really where we need to be at. And there really doesn't, at the end of the day, need to be a whole lot more thought in it than that. However, that being said, I certainly realize that many of you, and like myself, I, I like to see facts, I like to see evidence. And so with that in mind, I'm going to point to some information in the literature that is going to reinforce the position that I've stated for you here, which just to be explicit about that again, is that whole eggs are a more desirable, uh, are more desirable to consume than simply consuming an egg white or an egg yolk. But let's talk about why that is. Let's not just throw that out there. Let's actually show some evidence behind that. So what I want to do here is point to a couple of studies. And I think it's important in this conversation, I'm going to start us off with a, uh, with a piece of information here that I thought had a very interesting title and really points to uh, the direction that we've started to move back to. So goodbye to the egg white omelet and welcome back to the whole egg omelet. And as I stated earlier, I used to consume egg whites. I consumed a lot of egg whites. So where did a lot of this arise from? It, it came from the fact that we had concerns around consuming too much saturated fat and too much cholesterol in the diet. And the question is, is that really justified? The, the idea or the mindset was that that was going to push someone into advanced cardiovascular disease. It was going to precipitate that. 
but the evidence over time didn't support that. So it's begun to change the way that we think about both saturated fat and dietary cholesterol. And in summary here, we can certainly appreciate, as this article points out as well, that dietary cholesterol does not translate to serum cholesterol and dietary saturated fat does not co uh, correlate with an increase uh, in cardiovascular disease. Those things are not directly correlated. Uh, and in fact, when we speak more specifically about eggs, one of the things that stands out from this information is that certainly eggs are a nutrient dense food. I'll speak more to that in just a moment. But when you look at the use of whole eggs, in many, in many cases, even in cases of metabolic syndrome, consumption of whole eggs actually improves metabolic syndrome measures. And if you just think about that at a moment, let's say, for example, hunger uh, as, a, as a symptom, someone not being satiated, the consumption of adequate amounts of protein and fat are both going to discourage hunger. And so an egg easily helps to accomplish those things. Now, in terms of nutrient density, I want to point something out here, just a few nutrients just to mention before we delve into others here. But as is noted with this information, uh, things like vitamin D, which we talk a lot about, and, and eggs are a great source of vitamin D, uh, as well as other fat-soluble nutrients, and they even have the ability to help stabilize serum vitamin D levels. Uh, iodine, selenium, iron, so some, some, key, uh, some key minerals there, as well as uh, folate and some of the long-chain fatty acids like DHA, what you might consider as far as essential fatty acids. Not to mention things like uh, choline and lutein in there as well. But those are only a snapshot. Granted, those are more of the mainstream nutrients that we often talk about with eggs, but here's some that I think are often overlooked. So let me point to the title of this particular study for you, and it's Chicken Egg Proteins and Derived Peptides with Antioxidant Properties. So let me, let me state that just a bit differently here for a moment. This is showing, or this is stating that these proteins, these peptides in eggs are going to have antioxidant properties. So they're going to be able to offset that oxidative process. And what I find very interesting about this is there are a lot of these different biologically active, or maybe you state that bioactive peptides that are found in both the egg, the yolk, and also when you look at the membrane around the yolk, it has its own set of proteins as well. So for example, when we look at the egg white, the egg white's going to have proteins in there such as ovotransferrin, ovomucoid, lysozymes, ovomucin. So there's an abundance of these different proteins as well as some minor proteins in here as well. And then when you get to the yolk, most of the time the thought process around the yolk is that it is predominantly fats, that the yolk is lipids. And there is a, there is a significant lipid contribution, fat contribution, if you will, from the yolk. So as this study points out, it's going to be around 30 to 31 to 35%. But what is often overlooked is that the yolk also contains a high composition of proteins as well that also have their own physiological benefits. And as well as I mentioned, the membrane, the proteins in the in the membrane around the yolk also come into play here. Now, these are all biologically active peptides, right? These, these, are, these are peptides that when you consume those, we don't, in, we don't take the time to think about these as we're consuming that food. But the, this is maybe I'm thinking in terms of the idea of medicine is food. These are the peptides in this food that allow that food to be medicine, if you will, to use that, to use that slogan. And something else that we often hear, and I want to use this article because this article does point this out, but something we often hear is that you have to be able to assimilate different peptides or protein structures. You have to be able to break that down to one, two, or three amino acids. Uh, fragment. So it can't be longer than three amino acids. If it does, it's you're not going to digest that and assimilate that adequately. And this paper, along with others that do exist out there, refutes that point. In fact, this particular paper shows that you can have these larger uh, peptide strands, these biologically active proteins that we're talking about here, that can be anywhere from two to 20 amino acids long, and they can still be assimilated and promote a biological effect. And so th this is what we, when we consume 
whole eggs, these are, these are just a snapshot of some of the things that we're getting. So immediately the question becomes, why would we think to discard half of the beneficial components that are found in the egg by discarding the yolk or discarding the white? Inherently, that just doesn't make sense. We're taking away the therapeutic value of that food source. Now, let's, let's take this into population. So segments of the population, and let's use some specific examples of how eggs are whole eggs when they're directly compared against egg whites, what the benefit is. And so here's an example where we look at the consumption of whole eggs and its effect on muscle protein synthesis. So the ability to build muscle directly after exercise. And this is when amounts of nitrogen have been controlled in the diet. Of course, proteins being a nitrogen source. And notice what the outcome here was is that you can see it says we show that the ingestion of whole eggs immediately after exercise resulted in greater stimulation of myofibrillar protein synthesis than did ingestion of egg whites despite uh, all other things being matched up. So the point on this is that you really, you, you, you're expecting to have a greater outcome from the consumption of whole eggs than you do from just simply consuming egg whites. And again, that makes sense based on everything that I've just previously shared with you, that those are going to be additionally biologically active components in that, in that yolk that you're leaving out when you consume the white versus, versus not consuming the whole egg. And this was one study that showed that. There's actually been quite a few studies that have uh, looked at this type of information. In fact, uh, here's another one that you can see. This was a randomized controlled trial, Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. And this one shows the same thing. Whole egg consumption may be preferable during uh, resistance training programs geared towards the improvement of muscular strength and body fat percentage. And that's an ideal metric for whether it's you know young athletic men, as is, as is the case in this particular study, or whether we're talking about middle age or even the aging population, we want to control body fat percentage and we want to increase muscular strength and muscle development so that we can offset sarcopenia, offset that muscle losting of the skeleton and be able to maintain our skeletal integrity as we age. Now, I can already hear some of you asking and saying, well, what about the consumption of, uh, you're, you're talking about these scenarios where there's consumption of eggs in the population that is only related to, uh, for example, the, these young healthy men. They're the ones that gain the benefit from this. And that's not actually the case uh, at all. There's other populations we see in individuals with metabolic syndrome where, for example, they consume two eggs a day and they see that their markers around metabolic syndrome improve with that consumption of two eggs per day. And, and again, for the reasons I stated a bit earlier, not just in satiety, but when you also think about that food as medicine, if you will, and you're taking in these biologically active peptides that are resulting in a physiological impact. Let me give you one that just came to mind for me here, which is vitamin D. Vitamin D we know is typically deficient in individuals with metabolic syndrome uh, because of the impact around glucose regulation, because of the impact in upregulation of the immune system. There's a number of reasons that we would anticipate to see a decline in vitamin D status in individuals with metabolic syndrome. But when those individuals are consuming eggs, their ability to maintain those vitamin D levels is improved. And so those individuals are better able to maintain a serum vitamin D, better able to control their insulin receptor sensitivity just based off of that vitamin D because eggs are a routine part of their daily consumption in their food. Now, that being said, let me go a step further with the whole egg idea. And I want to look at, I've talked only up to this point and focused only up to this point on eggs as the sole component in the diet is, is they're making the sole impact here it is the way these studies that I've suggested or alluded to up to this point. That's the way they've, they've looked at this. But that's not the reality of how most people are going to consume eggs. I mean, granted, if you're doing more of a carnivore dietary pattern, you may be focusing very heavily on eggs as a part of your carnivore pattern. 
However, probably by far more individuals are going to be in an omnivore pattern, maybe carnivore-ish, if you will, for some, but in an omnivore pattern. But even in individuals who are on the other end of the spectrum and have a high plant-based content, but are consuming eggs as a part of their diet, so maybe a ovo-vegetarian, if you will, you'll notice in, in the impact that eggs have in this category is that there's an increased benefit from on carotenoids and what this is suggesting to us is that uh, and you can see here just as this says these findings support the claim that co-consuming cooked whole eggs is an effective way to enhance carotenoid absorption from other carotenoid rich foods so granted eggs are going to have carotenoids uh, in the in the yolks but not only that they're also going to be able to enhance the uptake and the bioavailability of carotenoids in other foods so here we see not just a benefit directly from the egg but there's a benefit that the egg is yielding to other foods so that we can have more um, more nutritional we can take more nutritional value from those foods directly now my, my thought is probably at this point in listening to this information is that you're in one of two camps here. You're probably on board with what I've said and you're thinking, yes, consumption of whole eggs makes more sense. There's, there's no reason to discard the yolks uh, and only eat egg whites. Or again, and I really don't understand where this comes from, from some influencers I've heard this from, but the ideology of only consuming the yolks and discarding some of the whites that just really doesn't make sense to me. But nonetheless, if you're on board with consuming the whole egg, then you probably aren't going to hesitate of eating the whole egg anymore. However, I do appreciate that some are still going to push back on the ideology around eating too many eggs in the diet is going to raise cholesterol, specifically total and LDL cholesterol, and it's going to increase your saturated fat intake. It's going to uh, significantly bypass the amount of what is considered an ideal amount of cholesterol. Uh, typically, the recommendations here have been 300 milligrams or as little cholesterol as you can take in per day, and a single egg is going to be somewhere, a single large egg is going to be somewhere between 200 and 250 milligrams. Uh, if I'm eating eggs for breakfast, I've already blown past that with by a quarter of the way into my breakfast, and I really am not thinking about it. So, you know, if you're in the, if you're worried about cardiovascular disease, those are probably the other, the, probably the things that are making you hit pause. But again, when you look at the data between observational studies, observational studies don't show a connection. They don't strong show a correlation between the intake of those eggs and the impact of the dietary cholesterol and saturated fat on cardiovascular disease. And certainly when you get to the intervention trials, they definitely don't confirm that fact. But there is one other piece of this that I still see kicked around a lot that I do want to put out there for us and debunk. And I'm gonna use some literature to debunk this as well as present a question to you. And so now I'm gonna be talking about TMAO. And this is trimethylamine oxidase. And so this is one that we often hear about when you consume red meat and eggs, basically foods that are going to be higher in carnitine and choline, that this is going to increase your production of TMAO. TMAO is going to advance cardiovascular disease. This is a metabolite that is produced from the microbiome secondary to the consumption of choline and carnitine that again advances cardiovascular disease. So here's a study specifically looking at this as it relates to eggs and you can see whole egg consumption increases plasma choline and betaine without affecting TMO, TMAO levels or gut microbiome in overweight postmenopausal women. So there is there's overweight, there's some dysfunction there, so some metabolic dysfunction, but even in these individuals, we don't see a problem with this, and you can come right down here to the conclusion, which is that the consumption of two eggs per day in these overweight, postmenopausal, mildly hypercholesterol living women significantly, significantly increased plasma choline and betaine, but did not increase plasma TMAO or alter gut microbe composition. So what this is suggesting is that when this, this 
idea that TMAO is going to inherently rise as a byproduct of egg consumption, this study directly refutes that. Uh, moreover, that there's going to be an alteration of the microbiome, and these microbiome, the microbiota are going to start producing these toxic metabolites that are going to exacerbate cardiovascular disease. Logically, from a common sense standpoint, so I would always ask that it's great to look at literature and we should do that to have a deeper understanding, but that doesn't mean do that at the expense of checking our common sense and our basic understanding of how nature operates. Why would our bodies from the consumption of a natural food source that hasn't been adulterated, that we've consumed for centuries on end, why would our bodies inherently produce a toxic metabolic byproduct that is going to advance cardiovascular disease, which is a state of dysfunction that has not been a part of our ancestors? History. That, again, guys, logically it just doesn't make sense. So we need to be careful in how we set up these arguments in the first place or, or where we allow these arguments to go. But thankfully, studies like this and studies like some of the other studies that are out there that really look at TMAO with a critical eye and aren't simply looking at these associations are acknowledging that TMAO is not a, a, not a problematic factor here. If it was, we shouldn't be telling individuals to consume fish as part of a cardiovascularly healthy diet because TMAO is naturally found in fish. So we're directly consuming it on that level versus it being made when we consume red meats and eggs. How are they different? They're not. So you can't get on one side of that bandwagon and not be on the other side of it. So we wanna be equal in how we're looking at this TMAO conversation. Irrespective of all of that conversation, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, to that point around TMAO, TMAO is, TMAO is not an issue. Eggs are not advancing your cardiovascular disease. Eggs are, whole eggs are going to be a more optimal food source because of the numerous bioactive compounds and nutrients found in there, as opposed to simply eating egg whites or simply eating the egg yolks eat the whole egg and gain the benefit of all the aspects of that egg that it has to offer. Just think guys, if it is if it's substantial enough in its nutritional value to take a single cell, which is what that egg is, and turn that into a chick and nourish a chick, what can it do for you as part of your diet on a routine basis? So I'll leave you with that to think about. So with that all being said guys, thanks for uh, tuning in today. I appreciate you stopping by and listening to this. I'm going to be bringing more information, not just about eggs, but about the, the science and the reality uh, and the benefits to the foods that we produce out here on the ranch. And we've seen a lot of benefits with these in our personal lives. I've seen a lot of benefits directly with the patients that I work with. And I'm simply trying to bring this information to you so that you can help use it to overcome a lot of this dogmatic nonsense that's out there that seems to have become too mainstream and start to just step back, think about your food at a very high level and think about, does this make sense for me to consume? Would I have done this 100, 150 years ago? And if the answer is yes, then it's probably something you should be considering in your diet. So again, thanks for joining me today and I look forward to talking with you soon. Dr. Arland Hill out at Harvest Hills Ranch.